Making a game is pretty cool, but you know what's even cooler? Making money from your game. This is the first part in a two-part like mini-series in the Tycoon where I'll be showing you how to make game passes and dev products for your Tycoon. So in this video, we'll be covering the game pass aspect. In the next video that's closely related to this one, we'll be covering dev products. So I'll show you step by step how to create the buttons to buy the game pass, how to make the game pass on the Roblox dashboard, and how to script both the client and the server. So like and subscribe if you enjoy. Make sure to watch the next video about dev products because they're closely related. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's start by creating our Game Pass. So I'm on Roblox on the website. So just go to your browser and go to the Roblox website. Then go to Create. And then find your game. In my case, uh, my game is Tycoon Video 8. Because I created this place on Video 8. It's been kept up to date. So that's what I'll be using. And click on the cog next to the Edit button. And then click on Create Pass to create your pass. So the first thing you want to do is choose your image. I always forget to choose my image and then I choose it and it like overwrites the pass name. It's kind of annoying. So I'm just choosing like a random image from my old game. And I'm going to name this Money Multiplier. That's going to be the name of the pass if I can spell multiplier right. There we go. And then you can put whatever you want for the description. I'm just going to say this multiplies your money by two. So my main goal of this uh, game pass is to uh, every time your block hits the collector, its va value, its worth will be multiplied by two. So you'll just get more money per drop. That's why it's a game pass because it just applies globally to your game all the time. Okay, so now I'm going to click preview and then verify upload. And then boom, we have our money multiplier. So what you want to do now is click on your game pass and then go into the URL and find the number. So you see robux.com slash game pass slash some number then slash the name of the game pass. You want this number right here. This is your game pass ID. It's what you can use to prompt the user to purchase the game pass in game. They can purchase it on the screen on the game screen in the Roblox website, but we also want them to be able to purchase it in-game. So I'm going to copy that. And now let's head over to Roblox and start actually scripting the buttons to buy this Game Pass and the server scripts to actually make it work. So I'm here in Roblox, and I'm going to start by going to Starter GUI. Click the plus arrow. Oh, if I can do it. Click the plus arrow, and then we want to create a screen GUI. And then I'm just going to rename this GUI to something like main GUI because, you know, it's our main GUI. And then I'm going to add a frame. And I'm going to make sure this frame is, you know, on a side thing. And you can do this however you want. I'm probably going to go through it pretty quickly because it's not really that important to the video. One thing I like to do is add a UI padding to the frame and then set the padding left to something like 0.05. And then I'll move my frame out a little bit. Actually, I need to make it less, so more like 0.01. And I'll move my frame out a little bit and give it some room on the bottom or on the side. So now I'm going to make a text button. This will be our button for the user to buy their game pass. And then in the frame, again, I'm going to add a UI list layout. And this will make sure that our button will be in a nice order. And I'm going to change the vertical alignment to center. And this just makes sure that all of our buttons will be stacked on top of each other in a nice way, which is nice and good. And I'm going to make some padding. We're just going to do like point. 025 for padding and it won't really matter now until we add more buttons 
So I'm going to rename this button to the multiplier button. And then I'm going to create a UI corners object just to make it look a little better. And I'm going to just make the text say money multiplier. There we go. And so very important, I'm going to go into my money multiplier button, go into add attribute and add an attribute, change the type to number, and then change the name to game pass ID, capital G and then capital I, and everything else is lowercase, there's no spaces, and hit enter, and this is your game pass ID. So if you haven't already, go back to your game pass ID in the URL and hit control C to copy it, and then go back into Roblox, go into this little attribute, and use control V to paste your game pass ID. So our scripts are going to use this to figure out which game pass the button wants you to buy. And the way the doing it this way allows us to make multiple buttons that all unlock different game passes really easy. And so I'm going to also go into the tag editor, add a new tag and call this game pass button. And then make sure m multiplier buttons highlighted and click the checkbox and that means our multiplier button is now a game pass button that we can then script. Our GUI's done, and now it's time to script. And again, the actual setup of your GUI isn't really that important. The only important thing is the Game Pass ID attribute and the tag Game Pass button. So now let's go into Starter Player and then Starter Player Scripts and create a new local script. And I'm going to name this script Client Monetization because it'll handle both our Game Pass and our dev product in the same script. So let's start by first defining the collection service because we'll need that for our tags. And then we also need our local player, so I'm gonna get the player service. Oh, whoops. Messed up the formatting there. And then I'm going to get the marketplace service. And the marketplace service is the service responsible for dev products and the game passes, anything to do with Robux transactions. And I'm going to get my player. So it'll be players.local player. And so now I'm going to make a function, local function config game pass. And it's going to take in a button. It can be a text button or an image button. In my case, I just use the text button in my GUI. And inside of this function, we're going to start by getting the ID. The ID will be equal to button get attribute game pass ID, which will be that number that we put in our button. And in order to make it prompt the user to buy the game pass when they click the button, all we have to do is say button.activated, connect a function. So whenever the button's clicked, touched, or the game pass, or the game pad, like Xbox controller selects it, it'll be activated and it'll call this function. And all we do here is say marketplace service, prompt game pass purchase. And then we send in our local player and the ID game pass that we want to pur purchase. It's very important that it says prompt game pass purchase because when I first started out, I just used prompt product purchase and it never worked. So you need to make sure you're prompting a game pass purchase, not a product. So now we first need to run through all of the existing buttons tagged with the game pass button tag and set them up with this config game pass function. <laughs> And then we need to connect buttons which will be added or removed, even though it's highly unlikely that you ever need to add or remove your Game Pass buttons, but, you know, we, we still have to do it for completeness sake. So I'm going to do four underscore button and I pairs. Collection service, get tagged, Game Pass button, do. And so... We want to run through all the buttons tagged with the Game Pass button. 
And then we all we don't want to do is just call config game pass with the button. So that's basically it. And then in the rare case that a button is added after the fact, or maybe it has to do with loading on client side because cl stuff on the client side loads in different order. It's not really consistent like the server side. We need to do collection service, get instance, added signal, game pass button, and then connect config game pass. Boom. And make sure there's no parentheses on this function because we're passing it in as like a reference to be called whenever a new game pass button is added or a tag is added to a button that's named game pass button. Okay, cool. So that should be our game pass button done. We can honestly go test it out right now. So I'm going to hit play. And then I'm going to click money multiplier. And you can see it says, it says error. But it gave me this prompt and it says you already own this item, your account is not in charge. That's because whenever you create a game pass, it automatically gives it to you. So it's fine that it just says you don't it's an error because you, you still have it, so it's fine, you know. Because to a new player that would just prompt them to buy the game pass. Okay. So this system is nice and reusable. You can make as many game passes as you want, and you'll be able to hook them up to this whole system. You don't have to write code for every single button and every single use case. So we want to do that same idea on the server. So let's go into server script service, create a new module script, and I'm going to name this module just simply game passes. And I'm going to delete everything in this module, and then I'm going to, actually let me zoom in, I'm going to do return, and then return a table, and in this table, the key is going to be the ID of the game pass, and the value is going to be a function that we want to call when a player is found with that specific game pass. So I'm going to use brackets here, and then I'm going to control V, the game pass ID, once again. I'm going to do equals function, and then player as the parameter. And so the reason I put brackets here is because it's not like a number. It's not like one, two, three, whatever. We just need this to make sure it's fine. And the table syntax can recognize it. And then we have a function with the player. And so the way I'm going to handle the money multiplier is I'm just going to simply set an attribute. So player set attribute money multiplier. I'm going to set this to a value of 2. So whenever a player is found with this attribute, we want to set the money multiplier to 2. But right now, this attribute isn't really accessed by anything in our tycoon itself, so it won't actually affect anything. So I'm going to go into components, and then collector, because this is the thing responsible for deleting the drops and sending the value, the worth of the drop, to the server. So all I have to do to access how much it's worth is add, underneath the if worth then I can add a line, say, local multiplier equals self dot tycoon dot owner get attribute money multiplier and this would work if the player owns the game pass but if you don't own the game pass then this attribute will not be set and this will return nil and we don't really want that so I'm gonna put an or one after it so what this will do is if the player doesn't have a multiplier money multiplier set it'll default to 1. And since multipliers are usually multiplied multiplied to the value that they're doing, and anything multiplied by 1 equals itself, it won't affect your worth. So all we have to do is go down to this line right here, and next to our worth, we can do a multiplication times multiplier. So if the player owns a game pass, their multiplier will be set to a value of 2, and thus the worth will be double. So each time you get a drop, so like our copper is worth 5 money, it'll be now worth 10 money, according to the system. But obviously right now, this function is never called. So let's go into the player manager. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom. I'm going to make a new function. So call it function player manager dot register game passes. And it'll take in a parameter of the player in which we want to register their game passes. And so all we want to do in here is run through all of the functions in our game passes module check if the player owns the game pass that the functions id is or like the key is 
and then we want to call that function if they do own it. So I'm going to need a reference to both the marketplace service and the game passes module. So I'm going to say local marketplace services, marketplace service equals game get service, marketplace service, and then I'm going to do local game passes equals require script dot parent dot game passes. Scroll all the way back down to the bottom. And then in here, I'm going to say for id comma pass function in pairs game passes do. And notice how I'm using pairs because it's not an array. It's actually like a table. It's a dictionary, I should say. So in pairs game passes. So we run through all the game passes. We check if the id, which is like the game pass id. So in our case, it'll be this number right here. So we'll say if marketplace service user owns game pass async and we send in the player dot user id and we send in the id of the game pass that we want to check so if this function returns true then we want to call the pass function with the player as the parameter so this is a nice system where whenever we can check if the user owns a game pass and the async by the way just means that it runs not it doesn't yield the thread it just runs and waits for a value to get back and then it continues on and then we have the player dot user id which is the player and the idea of the game pass which we run through so this is a nice reusable system where if we want to add another game pass all we have to do we don't have to change the player manager code we just add in other brackets and put some random numbers and then do another function so if you ever want to add more game passes in the future that's how you can do it but right now the registry game passes is never being called, but it's a very simple fix to call it. We have to go to whenever our player is added, and then we all we have to do, I'm, I'm going to do it at the very top, doesn't really matter where you do it. I'm going to do the player manager dot register game passes for the player that joins. So every time a player joins, the game passes will be registered. If they own any game pass in our list of game passes here, it'll call the respective function, and in our case, setting the multiplier to 2. So let's try it out. So I'm going to just create my dropper. And instead of 5, it should be 10. So now it's increasing in increments of 10. So I'm getting double the money for each copper that goes down, which is absolutely perfect. And again, you can reuse the system for as many game passes as you want. You just have to implement the code and the respective component to actually make it worth something. But the actual register registration system itself is fully reusable and modular. And that's it for this video. With the game passes done, in the next video we can move on to dev products, which are like game passes, except you can buy them multiple times over, which is really quite nice. So like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more Tycoon and other Roblox scripting content. Comment any questions or more Tycoon video suggestions down below. And with that, I hope you have a nice day, and goodbye.